What's going on, everybody? Y'all already know the vibes, baby. And I gotta say, Halo is officially back. That's why today's video, I'm gonna be making a tier list on the best Halo Pro teams, the teams that are currently partnered with the HCS already. I'm gonna start with the lowest tier, the D tier. It, it could be the NA tier, not like NA is in North America, just not available. Just because I know Fnatic, I don't think they have a team yet. I don't think they've officially announced a team. So, I mean, I can't just make up a team in my mind. I can't put them any higher than the D tier, but think about them as just being not ready. They're TBD, it's TBD. And then the next team that I also have joining them is Navi. Now, if you guys don't know who is on Navi's Halo Infinite team, the players are Jimbo, Kimbo, Respectful, and Two Foxy. Now, I have them in the D tier for this list for a couple of reasons. And that's because, and I mean this as respectfully as I possibly can, they're playing over in Europe, okay? That's just a European team. And so far in the 2Ks and the Raleigh qualifier for Europe, they have failed to make it to the grand finals. Okay, now I know some of these players on this Navi team. And on paper, it looks like they would be a very dominant team. They just haven't really put it together as much as I, I would like them, you know, to have been able to, especially being in Europe. The reason is, and obviously there could be issues with connection, it's online, et cetera, et cetera. But the European scene has always been behind the North American scene when it comes to Halo. It just, that's just how it is. Okay. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Just how it is. And if they're not even cracking the finals, you know, they've gotten third twice and I believe fourth. There's a decent amount of teams that are better than them in the European scene right now. From my understanding, I just don't know how they could possibly stack up to some of these NA juggernauts. Moving on to the C tier, the first team that is going to be put in this tier is going to be G2 Esports. This team, if you guys don't know who G2 is, the players are Gilkey, Arctic, Sabinator, and Straight Sick. Some OG Halo pros, some new up and comers, I'm assuming. And they're not horrible, you know, from the 2Ks or the open qualifiers and the Raleigh qualifier. They've been kind of bouncing around the 5th, 6th, and 7th, 8th range, which isn't bad by any means. But not only have they been outplaced consistently by every team that I haven't placed in the tier list, they also have been outplaced by teams who aren't here. Like that, maybe they don't have an org yet. Um, maybe they're just not partnered. Oh, sheesh, excuse me. Whatever the case may be. But they just seem very middle of the pack. Um, they haven't really given me much to go off of. But from what I have seen, I can't give them any better than C tier. It just, it would be unfair to the rest of the teams if I put them any higher. Now, here's where it gets interesting, okay? Because I'm going to be putting one team in the C tier, and that's G2, and only one team in the B tier, and that is Space Station Gaming. I think I said that right. I think I, I think it's Space Station. Space, yes, yeah, Space Station Gaming, SSG. Um, this team is ace formal, newly formal, because it wasn't formal at the beginning of, uh, of Infinite, but ace formal, Tylenol, and deciding. This is kind of a toss up because I have watched a bunch of their scrims with formal. He streams them all the time, but we all know that's just practice. Okay. It's not the end all be all. And they haven't really had as much time compared to the other teams when it comes to playing in these qualifier tournaments. The reason is because the first one, they didn't have formal. Formal wasn't on the team and they got nine through 12th without them. The second one, formal was on the team. They got fifth through six. Had some honestly pretty close games. It looked like they could have potentially gotten top four. And then the third one, the Raleigh qualifier, Formal was actually at the 100T compound for the Call of Duty Legends tournament. So SSG played with Elamite, their coach, in place of Formal. And they got 9 through 12th again. Now, no disrespect to Elamite or Tusk, but Formal obviously helps this team in a lot of ways. Okay, Formal is one of the greatest multi-FPS players of all time. And from the scrims that I've been watching, from how good they did when they played in one of these qualifiers with Formal, I think 
B tier is the right place for them for the time being. This team has a lot of potential for sure. And I can see them definitely moving up throughout the year, but there's only so much that I can go on. So I have them at B tier. I do think that they've been performing a lot better than a team like G2, um, but I just can't move them in amongst the rest of these teams that I still haven't put on the tier list. Moving to the A tier first up, I'm gonna have FaZe Clan, even though I don't believe their team has been officially announced yet. I don't know why. I don't know if there's any issues there or, you know, the contracts just haven't been signed. Pen hasn't been put to the paper yet. But I'm assuming that they're going to figure it all out. And FaZe is going to be... And FaZe is going to consist of Falcated, Boo Boo Doo Boo, Bound, and Snipe Down. Snipe Down is back. He is retiring. I don't know if retiring is the right word. But he's taking a break from playing Apex competitively. And he is back for Halo Infinite. Phase Clan or Phase Clan TBD, uh, they started off honestly around the same as G2 in terms of how they were performing in these online tournaments, getting seven eighth at back to back qualifiers. But then at the most recent qualifier, the Raleigh qualifier, which is qualifier for the first LAN event in HES, they played out of their minds. They got top three falling, you know, they got top three falling short to Sentinels. But they finally proved that they can be a top team. And I mean, when you look at the team on paper, they have four unbelievable players, players that have had a lot of success. They have a mix of old school professional Halo players like Snipe Down. And then they have some of the new kids uh, around town. You know, they have Falcon and Boo Boo Doo Boo and now Bound. This team has a lot of potential. Um, I truly think that they could be a top team, an S tier team during this season in the HGS. But H. It's going to be tough. But right now, I have FaZe in the A tier. But joining alongside them is going to be E United. Now, I'm placing E United in the A tier for a couple of reasons. The first one is because with their placements in these qualifiers online, so far, they've been right there. They've been at the cusp of really breaking in and potentially taking one of these tournaments. They've gotten fifth, sixth, and fourth twice. So it seems at this point early on in the year, they have a good understanding of the game. Um, and I definitely think that they deserve to be in the A tier category. But another thing that worries me is the talent on the team. And I mean this in the most respectful way that I possibly can, because they're obviously all very talented players. I just think when you compare them to a lot of the other players on these other top teams, they're kind of lacking a little bit of talent. E United consists of Spartan, Ryan Noob, King Nick, and Rain. And none of these players have ever really been, I don't want to say like MVP level players, but like they haven't really stood out because of their insane individual skill. Now, one of the positives for E United is I think that this is going to be a very team oriented team. I think this is a team that can kind of master Halo Infinite and they're going to rely on their knowledge, um, their just map awareness, their on the fly adjustments um, and, and general understanding of Halo Infinite, you know, to really take them to the highest level. And like I said, these players are obviously very talented. I'm not saying they're dog shit by any means. I just think that that is something that it could be worrisome if you're an e united fan moving forward when you play these top teams right when you play the teams like sentinels cloud nine optic even phase like it could be tough because you could be making all the right plays but it doesn't matter if you can't execute if you can't get those kills the game's going to be hard but so far in infinite they've been playing good like i said they've gotten fifth six fourth twice I haven't really seen much practice from them um but I'm only going off of, of what I know. So I also have them in the A tier alongside FaZe. And now moving on to the S tier, we're going to have three teams here. We are. And you guys obviously know those three teams. So I'm just going to put them up top. It's going to be Cloud9, Sentinels, and Optic Gaming, Optic Envy, Optic Texas, whatever. And I think by far, these three teams have been the most dominant so far in Halo Infinite. You have to say Optic is probably the best team in the game right now. So far in those three qualifiers that they played, they've gotten first, first, and second, where they lost two best of fives to Sentinels. 
uh and the first series was a 3-2 so they could have potentially won that series and went and just swept the floor with these qualifiers but their consistency is key their team is great on paper it's apg pistola lucid and trippy they have arguably the best player in halo infinite right now in lucid uh trippy also is unbelievable then you have olin apg like this team on paper is absolutely stacked they've been performing very well they've looked like they've been teaming for years honestly at this point so i'm glad to see especially with optic and envy merging them to have a team that can start off a game as a powerhouse like they have so far and then i also have sentinels this team, everyone knows Sentinels. They were the old Optic, Snakebite, Lethal, Royal 2, and Frosty. Best Halo 5 team. Um, some of the best Halo players of all time. And their situation is kind of interesting because I, I see that they're basically being blacklisted by a lot of teams and they haven't been able to really get as, as much quality practice compared to a lot of these other pro teams. And I'm not sure why. I don't know what the exact reason is. I don't know if it's personal issues or if teams just know like, hey, Sentinels is going to be fucking nasty. So let's just prolong them learning the game as long as we can, which I hope not, because that's kind of cheesy if that's the case, if it's something like that. But I don't know. I don't know. But Sentinels has to be S tier. OK, out of the three tournaments, they won one, which was the Raleigh qualifier where they did beat Optic texas in two best of fives they also have a third place and they have one where they got upset pretty early and they got knocked out in in top 12 which i was surprised but it's early on it happens two of the three qualifiers they were in the top three and the most recent one they did win it and we all know these players we all know that these players are amongst the best they have the talent they have the team chem they've been teammates for years now and they just deserve to be an ast here i don't need to explain this this isn't some hot take and then the last team that will be joining Optic and Sentinels in the S tier is going to be Cloud9. It's going to be Cloud9. They honestly have been very consistent in their own right. This team has a lot of successful players. If you guys don't know who is on Cloud9, it is Stellar, Renegades, Penguin. It is Stellar, Eco, Penguin, and Renegade. Those players have had a ton of success in Halo 5, and they're kind of just transitioning it over into Infinite. They start out in the first qualifier getting second where they actually lost two best of fives to Optic in a series in an event where I kind of thought they were going to take it home. And then they got second in the next one, losing to Optic again. But this time they were coming from lose bracket and they just couldn't get the job done. But they made it there back to back finals. And then in the most recent Raleigh qualifier, they unfortunately fell to fourth. But similarly to optic and sentinels these players we know how talented they are okay they've been super consistent two seconds and a fourth um even though they've kind of regressed a little bit they're still a top team they're still a contender a team that can really win raleigh i i wouldn't be surprised if any of these teams in the s tier win the first event in raleigh i think these have to be the three clear-cut favorites so these three teams do make my s tier on my Halo Infinite tier list. I wanna know though, what you guys think. You know, would you move any of these around? Would you maybe, I could have potentially added teams, whatever the case may be, but I didn't, okay, I didn't. But I wanna know if you guys agree with this. And I also wanna know who do you think is going to win the first event in Halo Infinite, the first LAN event in Halo Infinite coming up shortly in a couple weeks, I believe, in Raleigh. I might be there, I don't know. So if you guys are going let me know in the comment section below as well, because who knows, we might be able to meet, maybe take some photos, have a conversation, chop it up. As always, though, guys, I appreciate the love. And until next time, I'm going to see y'all when I see y'all. The kid is out.